Good morning, everyone online, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Calvary Online Worship Experience. Welcome home. My name is Eli Emiliano, and I can't wait to worship and celebrate Jesus with you today. Now, before we jump into our worship experience, I want to let you know that there is something special about gathering together in person to worship as one church. So it's not too late. There's still time. Here at our Irving location, we have our weekend experiences. Of course, we are 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Whichever works for you, we would love for you to join us in person. I also want to personally invite you to come out to one of our Calvary location for an in-person worship experience. Remember, we are one church in multiple locations, and we want to meet you, welcome you, and worship with you in person. Just know that it's truly not the same without you. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you interested in getting to know who we are as a church, who we are as believers, how we live as believers, and how we can change our world? Well, Grace Walk is the perfect option for you. We meet in person the second Sunday of every month, and you can always learn more on our Calvary app or at calvarychurch.cc. If you love the gospel as much as I love the gospel, would you love to grow in it more and learn more about what we preach here at Calvary? If so, then please sign up for Gospel Institute. It's full of online classes and teaching lessons that explain in depth what we preach as a church and what the gospel truly is. It's self-paced. It's wonderful. You can find out more on our Calvary app or on calvarychurch.cc. Now, we don't just need you. We want you. We want you to be part of our team. It's always growing and there is a place for everyone, whether you sing in the shower, shoot photography for fun, or feel you just love people and would love we would love for you to sign up for our dream team. You can sign up on Calvary app at, or at calvarychurch.cc. If you're going through Grace Walk, we'll give you ways to sign up there as well. We're super excited because we just kicked off our new season of Gospel Circles. Here at Calvary, we believe that you were not created to live life alone. If you're looking for a community to do life with, sign up for our new season of Gospel Circles. Gospel Circles are held in homes, coffee shops, spaces all over the Metroplex. To sign up, just go to the Calvary app. Church, wherever you are watching from, we believe that you are watching for a reason. Our lead pastor, Ben Daly, opens every one of his messages declaring that those listening would have eyes to see, ears to hear, a mouth to confess, and a heart to receive all the good things that Christ has already provided for you. And that is our prayer for you. Now, right before we hop into the message for today, please know that your generosity allows us to make an impact in the lives of everyone, every day, everywhere. Don't miss out on that opportunity to live generously and give generously today by giving on our safe and secure Calvary app or on calvarychurch.cc. If you missed last week, Go back and check it out. But until then, we want to make sure you're caught up and ready to go into today's message. It's amazing. You don't want to miss it. Stay right there. So check out this short recap of last week. Restoration comes as you rest in Christ and in his finished work. So how do you rest in the finished work of Christ? By simply believing that the work to save you and to keep you eternally forgiven, eternally righteous, that work, the work to keep you eternally righteous, the work to keep you eternally blessed, all of that's finished. In Matthew 6, he says, from now on, when you pray, pray like this. First phrase, our what? Our 
father what was he doing he was removing all distance he was letting you know that you are no longer distant from the father but the father is now one with you every illusion of distance is now gone what does it mean to be a part of God's family God wants you to know that you are one with him I told you you're not normal you get to call the creator of the universe father you get to call him father that means anything he owns you also own anything he has you also have any power Power that he has you got it on the inside of you you are one with the father he is living on the inside of you our father who art in heaven how would be thy name thy kingdom what come thy will be done on earth where as it already is in heaven how through me through you through you understanding the special relationship that you have with God he's your father
Welcome to Calvary Church, everybody. We're happy to see you here this morning. Would you stand and worship with us today? You so love the world that you gave. Your only son, he made a way. Carrying what I never could. Crucified, he died.
Come on, church, if you believe it's already done, keep your hands clapping. Give the Lord some praise and shout, it's already done. It's already done. It's so good to worship with you today at this 11 a.m. worship experience. This is the Irving location. We're one church in multiple locations, and we're so glad that you are here to worship with us. My name is Jacob. This is my wife, Alexandra. And I got to tell you, there are so many new families here that I've already met in the Welcome Center, in the lobby today. Would you put your hands together and welcome our first time guests here in person? We welcome you. We're glad that you and your family are here with us today. We sang it a few minutes ago. We are standing on his promises that he's made to us. And we came to remind you this morning of a simple but powerful reminder, and that is this. God's word is sure. I know it's simple, but it's powerful. Repeat after me. God's word is sure. One more time like you believe it. God's word is sure. And say this, say, it's sure for me. You know, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 33 says, but the one who listens, the one who listens to me will live in undisturbed heavenly peace, free from fear, confident and courageous. Then it says this, that same one will rest unafraid and sheltered from the storms of life. I want to remind you, God's word is sure. And regardless of what you're going through today, you, because the word promises it, can live in heavenly peace. You can live free from fear. You can live free from all the things that are trying to come against you today. And you can live with great courage because the word promises it and that word is sure for you. Today, I just declare that over you that whatever you have walked in with, God's word is there to refresh your mind, to renew your mind, and to remind you of what God believes concerning you. This morning, before Alexandra declares a blessing over you, I want to invite pastors and elders to come to the, to the front this morning. And during this next song of worship, if there's a need you have, if there's something concerning you, if there's something that you want us to agree in prayer with you today, I want to invite you during the next song to come up for prayer. And these pastors and elders want to declare God's sure word over you. We want to declare his promises over your life that you would believe them and receive them. Before we do, church, lift your hands. Alexandra, declare a blessing over us. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that we can stand on your promises, your promises of your love, your joy, your peace, your protection. I thank you, Lord, that whatever we may be going through, we know that we can just trust in you, Lord. We can trust that you got this. We have our trust in you, Lord. We thank you and we rest in that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, church, give the Lord one more hand of praise and let's continue in worship. God bless you. I 
all you're walking through is goodness. You're walking with his goodness. You got nothing but life now. I don't know what your situation may look like, but I don't see dry bones. I don't see dead bodies. I see God giving grace gifts in this room. We're breathing in his promises and we're speaking his miracles today. Come on, just give him thanks where you are. Somebody say, I'm alive. Somebody say, I have life. And give him praise one more time. You're so worthy, God. Thank you so much, Jesus. No longer I who am, but Christ in me. For I've been born again, my heart is free, the hope of heaven before me, the grave behind hallelujah, you brought me back to life. Come on, sing that like you believe what you're saying. Say it. No longer I. Shame and sin is gone. It's an honor and pleasure to worship with you today, church. You may be seated and turn your attention to these announcements. Looking for a way to become an official member at Calvary Church? We've got it. Grace Walk is a free class that will take you on an in-depth tour of Calvary Church. It's more than filling out some paperwork. It is the beginning of something new, a new home filled with love and grace. You'll hear from our lead pastors, get an understanding of our core values, and learn how to get plugged into all the amazing opportunities that are available here. Sign up for Grace Walk on the Calvary app or calvarychurch.cc. Students, Saint Camp is an all-inclusive summer getaway for you and your friends. If you're in 6th through 12th grade, we want to invite you from... Come on, lift your voice! Did anybody come to praise God today? Put your hands up, let's go! I just want to... Calvary Families, Kids Camp is here. Get ready for a safe, fun, gospel-centered camp for your children, grades 1st through 5th. Join us Friday, July 22nd for Camp Calvary Waco Season 2. Cost is $30 per child. To register or to sponsor a child for Kids Camp, go to the Calvary app or calvarychurch.cc. Well, good afternoon, Calvary family. Clap your hands if you're excited to be in God's house today. 
Thank you, Calvary Worship, for leading us. It's always a joy to be with you. I want to take a moment to welcome those that are joining us online, but a special welcome to those that make it a priority to be here in person. Clap your hands and just rejoice together. Those that are here physically in person at the 11 a.m., such a joy to be with you. Now, if you are here for the very first time, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to lift your hand up, hold it up for just a moment. Number one, we want to celebrate you. And number two, our hosts have a gift that they want to get to you. Look at all the hands that are up today. Can we celebrate those that are here for the first time? Keep them up, keep them up, keep your hands up. Now, that little ticket that you're getting, it's a card. You can redeem it at the Welcome Center. One of our pastors or elders are going to be there. They're going to welcome you, officially greet you, and let you know what we have in store here at Calvary. They're going to give you some information, answer any questions, and they're going to give you the Calvary Worship's new album that just came out a couple months ago. That is your gift for today. One more time, let's welcome those that are here for the first time. Such a joy to see you. Well, Pastor Adam, you a busy man. I get a chance to work alongside you. You've got Champions Club underway, launching in just a few months. Got some construction going on upstairs in those rooms, and uh, you're not slowing down. You're making sure that the next gen is moving and thriving this summer because you said it's going to be the greatest summer ever here at Calvary. Can y'all help me welcome Pastor Adam? He's over our next gen. Give us an update. Tell us what's going on. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Pastor Cream. And I just want to say you're looking very fine. Doesn't he look great today? I, I like we got the memo, y'all. We got the memo. But I will tell you, Pastor Cream, you're right. Yes. This is going to be the greatest summer ever for Next Gen. You yes. saw it just a moment ago. You saw we've got kids camp coming up. We've got students camp summit coming up. Now, do me a favor real quick. If you've already signed up your kids for kids camp or students camp, will you raise your hand? Will you wave it at me? I see you. I see you. Come on. Give them a shout out. Give them a shout out. Well, you've got to get your kids, your students signed up for camp. Camp is life changing and the message that's going to be taught this summer at camp you don't want your student to miss out on it you want them to experience the fullness of this because we're going into the gospel y'all and they're going to be walking out of camp different than when they went in so we want to make sure your student your kids get to camp if you have questions if you need help registering we're going to be meeting you right outside in the lobby today after service come by i want to meet you i want to talk to you and your students and we've got our whole team coming out there but there's something else that's going on this summer. Something that's specifically for our students. Calvary students is changing. It's changing it up a little bit. In fact, right now, during our 11 a.m. service, our junior high students are over in the student center right now, having fun, connecting, building community, diving deep in the gospel. Can we give it up for our junior high students? Pastor Roman and his wife, Kellen, are doing a phenomenal job leading that area. So grateful for them. If you have a junior hire, we want to make sure they get connected there. And then we also have our senior high, our high school students. They're actually sitting in service day right now with my good friend, Pastor Q. Pastor Q, will you wave at us real quick right here? He wants to meet with your students. They're coming in and they're worshiping with us at the 11 a.m. So if you're in high school, make sure you connect with that good-looking man right there. And this is a, this is, that's not all. That's not all. Can everybody say, that's not, all. that's not all? We got more. Here, for the next couple months, over the summer, we're going to be hosting a once-month event called Summer Nights. Summer Nights is an all-out party. It's a community event for your high school students where they can come, connect, engage, grow. And we're going to have fun. We're going to have food. And we're going to have our friends. We're going to connect in these places. So you can see it on the screen behind me. The first one coming up is this month. Friday, June 24th, 7 p.m. Make sure your student, if you've got a student, get them there. Let them connect. Let them engage. Let them grow. We're looking forward to it. And Calvary, just want to say thank you. Thank you for believing in the next gen. Thank you for supporting this very critical time for our students and our kids as they're growing up in something that we've never seen before. We're truly grateful and honored for the opportunity. Man, that touches my heart, Adam, because your area of ministry, of course, you know firsthand how powerful and important generosity is. So Calvary, uh, when you continue to give, when you're, your ongoing generosity is a blessing, you're helping Pastor Adam share this great message with our students. 
You're doing an amazing job of ministering to our families. And while we're on the subject of generosity, I want to kind of keep trend. Every week, Pastor Chris comes up and gives us an update of what's going on here in the house and locally and even globally. Well, not only does your generosity help our kids here at Calvary, we've got some local missions partners that we've been working with and supporting at Family First, and they've got an update for you. Look at what your generosity is doing real quick, Calvary. Greetings to all of our heroes at Calvary Church and that great visionary pastor, Ben Daly. We love you so much. We're so thankful for all that we're able to do because of your prayers and your support. We have been busy since our last update. We've been traveling all over the state of Texas, going into churches, recruiting families to step up and foster, adopt, and provide respite care for many children in the state of Texas that need a forever family. We want to make you aware of some very exciting things that are happening right now. First off, July 28th through the 31st, we are going to be co-hosting Launch Camp 2022. Here is Ashley Wilkes, the Executive Director of A World for Children, talking about Launch Camp. Hi, I'm Ashley Wilkes, Executive Director with A World for Children. We are so excited to partner with Pastor Kyle, the North Texas District, and Families First to bring back Launch Camp for our foster teens. The camp is four days of inspiration, learning, and most importantly, unity. At the end of this camp, we want all of our children to know that they not only have the support of our staff and volunteers, but also a family that they can always call if they ever need anything. Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate you. We are so excited about Launch Camp. You know, many times we're not able to show the faces or tell the stories of many of the children we're able to rescue, but we had a miracle happen this past week. A young lady by the name of Vanessa got adopted at the age of 17. And we're excited because Vanessa is gonna be coming to Launch Camp this summer because of the generosity of heroes like you. Thank you so much for all that you do to protect the unprotected. We are excited about the future. We are excited about rescuing as many children as possible. And it is all because of heroes like Calvary Church. Well, that's your doing, Calvary. Clap your hands and celebrate one more time. That's because of your generosity. Not only are we helping families here in the house, we're having, helping families abroad. Well, you got a chance to hear from Pastor Adam a moment ago. I got another voice that I want you to hear as we prepare for our generosity. Would you help me welcome Pastor Eli? He's over Calvary Latino. Man, it's so good to have you with us. And real quick, man, this, this is an interesting season that we're in. Some troubling times, right? And if you're not careful, you can get caught up in it and let it dominate your heart. But man, God's laid something on your heart. You got a chance to share with Pastor and at the nine o'clock, just give us some insight and some wisdom on how to maneuver and manage our hearts and minds as we journey through this crazy season that we're in. That's right, Pastor Kareem. Thank you so much, man. If, if, if a person doesn't and can't trust God, it is a very scary yes. season. When we first moved here five years ago, it, it was a very scary season for our life. It was a, a moment of, of worry, of, of, of uncertainty. We left everything that we had, everything that we knew, and we moved here, start from zero. And uh, it, it was worrisome. I, I, I was worried for our finances, for our family, for our future. And I came here with a very, very narrow and, 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 and uh, scarcity mindset, like always penny pinching and, you know, looking out for it. I would get so upset and so scared if I had to get on a toll because I was afraid I wasn't going to afford to be able to pay that and much less the bigger things in life. And, and that, you know, long story short, led to depression and anxiety and just, you know, all kinds of attacks. But thank God for our pastor, Pastor Ben, that's been leading us the last few years on how to tend to our garden and how to guard our heart and guard our minds and it's been a process it's been a couple of years all this time he's been teaching us but we've been putting it into practice the bible says above all else guard your heart because that's the course your life is going to take we need to guard our hearts we need to guard our minds i believe that if we change the way we think we will change the way we live and it's been it's been amazing i just want to encourage you today watch guard your heart guard your mind what, what what are you allowing to come into your heart and your mind what what voices are you hearing what voices are you listening to i tell you what five minutes of 
listening to any news source, whether it's on social media or, or, or on the television or wherever it may be, it'll, it'll drain you. It, it, it'll, it, it'll, be, you know, it'll be a burden on you physically, mentally, emotionally. It'll wear you down. But I, let me tell you what, five minutes of listening to good gospel and good news, that'll change things around. That'll make you start talking like the book of Hebrews that says, hey, we're not the kind that are going to quit. We have a persuasion on the inside of our soul that lets us face everything against all odds. And that's who we are. Another thing that I learned to do during this time is to watch the, the words, the declarations that come out of my mouth. Do not let the enemy's words come out of your mouth. Lack, scarcity, I can't, I'm poor, I'm not going to make it. No, pastor has taught us that when we declare and declaring is simply saying and believing what God already says and believes about us. I can, I will, I am who God says that I am. We change our circumstances when we speak what God already says and knows about us. And when we guard our hearts and we watch what we say, then we can trust and rest. Trust is simply resting. Resting doesn't mean you don't do anything. Resting means you trust that when you do what you do, you continue to do the natural, God will do the supernatural. You do what's in your ability and your capability and God will do the rest. You bring the five breads and the two fishes and he'll multiply it. You bring the empty jars and he'll fill them with oil. That's when you trust and you rest in him him and his faithfulness and when we do this then we can be free to be generous then we can give because we're not afraid that milk is now five dollars a gallon we're not afraid that gas is hitting five dollars a gallon that doesn't phase us anymore because we know that he is faithful listen to what I said we know that he is faithful it's not a lost hope. We're not throwing dice. We're not saying, man, I hope things turn around. I hope the economy, I hope the... No, no, no. We know who we have trusted. And we rest in that. And we're able to give and we're able to do. The Bible says, don't worry. And quit saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? Those are the things that people that can't trust God look for. But you, your heavenly father knows what you need. So put your eyes on him. Put your eyes on his kingdom and his goodness. And everything else will come to you in its course. Trust, rest, and let's give in Jesus' name. Trust, rest, and give. Well, as you prepare your generosity real quick, our hosts are here to help you. The ways to give is, they're on the screen. If you physically brought your generosity, look at that seat in front of you. Go ahead and grab that envelope and prepare that, and our host will collect it in a moment. But here's what we're doing. We're exercising our faith right now. This is a very important moment. It's a moment where you can fall into fear, or you can live by faith and say, I am going to continue to be generous even in tough times, because my God is faithful. Clap your hands if you know that he is faithful. Well, Pastor Eli, would you go ahead and pray and just make a declaration over everyone right after the hosts are going to serve, and we're going to collect our generosity today. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you because you are our shepherd and we shall not want. You are our provider. You are our healer. Father God, it's already done, and we believe it, and we trust, and we rest in that. We will not stress, we will not worry about what we will eat or drink or wear, because you will take care of us, because you have our best interest even more than what we have on ourselves. So we will rest and trust in that, and we'll continue to give in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, Calvary. Let's give. Welcome to Calvary. Whether this is your first time or first time in a long time, we want to say welcome home and we encourage you to pull out your phone right now. There are so many great things happening here at Calvary. Make sure to stay in the know by downloading the Calvary app. There you can give, check out past messages, or connect to a gospel circle. 
Also, make sure that you follow us on social media at Calvary Church CC to get daily encouragement and be reminded of who you are in Christ. Lastly, follow our pastors on social media, Pastors Ben and Kim Daly. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you online. your hands if you love Jesus this morning 11 o'clock real quick we're going to do something that we really value here at Calvary we believe in fun we believe in diversity you get a chance to experience both for the next 60 seconds stand to your feet real quick let's meet one another greet one another let's enjoy the fact that we are in person and gathering you don't have to hug anybody you don't have to give anybody a kiss give them a fist bump go between the aisles let's meet and greet for the next 60 seconds of artillery fire. Still evidence of climate change. Drone warfare as Russia. Tornadoes whipping across the Midwest. As people rush to stock up on supplies during this border crisis. Massive forest fires in the Siberian Arctic this year. Tonight, of the Federal Reserve announcing rare emergency action to calm financial fears. Total weak. Total cases of hospitalizations and hospitalizations rare in the country. Tonight, the time of shrinking. We're in recession. Violence against peaceful protesters. The Fed taking emergency action today. Diddle dum dum, diddle dum dum. When danger threatened him, he never got hurt. He knew just what to do. He ducked and cover, ducked and cover. He did what we all must learn to do. Take one of your hands, if you will, church, set it on your heart. I want you to say it out loud with all you got. Say, eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to receive, a mouth to confess, all the good things Christ has already provided for me. So today, church, we are launching a brand new four-part series called Winning the War in Your Mind. Thank you so much for being a part of a worship experience today. Grab your Bible, if you will, and turn with me, please, church, to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. While you're turning there, let me say quickly, Happy Pentecost Sunday. If you don't know, this is a very special day, a significant day 
especially as New Covenant believers. The term Pentecost means 50. On Passover, Jesus died for the deliverance of all mankind. 50 days later, on Pentecost, God poured out His Spirit on all flesh. Think about this. On that first Pentecost, God seemed distant as we were given rules on rocks to follow. But on the last Pentecost in the book of Acts, God himself came upon us, the Bible says, like fire and dwelt within us. Thank God, church, his fire never leaves us. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, so this is a special day that we celebrate the birth of the church. So I say happy Pentecost Sunday. Now I want you to take a moment as we launch into this brand new series and I want you to think about these questions. Do you find yourself focusing on the problems around you? Do you lack peace? Do you lack joy? Do you lack confidence? Do you lack strength? Are you conflicted? Are you double-minded, unstable in all of your ways? Do you have trouble seeing all of the good things in your life because you're so focused on bad things? Do you feel despair? Do you feel depression despite all of God's blessings? Do you blame everyone? Do you blame everything else for the hurt, maybe the pain that you feel in your life? If you answered yes to one or most of these questions, you are in a war in your mind. The wars in our minds are those negative Thoughts we all battle that feed our insecurities, our worries, torment, our fears, the thoughts that lead to things like irrational anger or undefined depression and despair. But I want you to know this month, church, that I have got good news for you. I want you to know that with Jesus' help, the wars in your mind can be won. And it isn't just up to you, it isn't just up to me to win these wars on our own. I want to remind you today that Jesus wants to work in and through us so that we can overcome. We can overcome every negative thought in this battle every negative mind intruder I want to start with this reality right here you may want to write it down every struggle hear me every struggle begins in the mind every struggle begins in the mind I know what the world says the world says the struggle is real but let me tell you what Jesus says he says the struggle is over I know what the world says. The world says, hey, you better try harder to overcome the war in your mind. But Jesus says, hey, I have already overcome this war. And if you want some really good news, he says, I have given you, believer, my mind. 100% of the time, hear me, church. When you are struggling with these negative, out of control, crazy thoughts, it is a case, watch, of mistaken identity. You are believing something about who God is or who you are now that is not true. It does not line up with what God knows to be true about you. 1 Corinthians 2.16, this is a verse of scripture that I have been meditating on all year long. It says this, you have, hey believer, take one of your hands, set it on your belly and be reminded today. You have the mind of Christ. Oh, wake up. You have the mind of Christ. 
And you do hold the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of his heart. See, I know the world system. The world system focuses on what? Your ability, your effort. But you are not of this world. God's kingdom is all about what? The Spirit's ability within us, working in and through us. You have the mind of Christ. And when you are struggling with negative thoughts, you have got to believe, you have got to realize that you have the mind of Christ. Every other thought is not your thought. No, I will not think that thought. That is not my thought. I have the mind of Christ. And by the way, his thoughts are never negative. His thoughts are never depressed. His thoughts are never fearful. His thoughts are never anxious. His thoughts are never ashamed. He is never confused. He does not experience feelings of guilt or condemnation. As a matter of fact, God is love. His mind is filled with love. He is always believing the best. You have the mind of Christ. You always believe the best. Say it out loud with me. Take your hand. Set it on your heart. Say it out loud like you are a believer. Say, God's thoughts are my thoughts. Why are you stumbling through that? Say it out loud. Say, God's thoughts are my thoughts. This week, when you have a negative thought, I want you to open your mouth and say, no, God's thoughts are my thoughts. Say this out loud. Say, his ways are my ways. Try it again. God's thoughts are my thoughts. His ways are my ways. Now I can hear some of you right now saying, well, Pastor Ben, have you not read Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 that says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways, says the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And can I tell you, church, Before I had a revelation of the new covenant, sadly, I quoted these verses as truth about myself, yet God was not even talking to me because have you ever read verse seven, which by the way is right above verse number eight and nine. Let's watch who he's talking to. It says this, let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God and he will freely pardon. And then it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, speaking of the wicked, speaking of the unrighteous. I don't know if y'all are getting this church. Do you see it? He is talking to the wicked, to the unrighteous. Hey believer, that's not me. That's not you. I am a believer. I am holy. I am righteous. I have the mind of Christ. I am one with him. I hold his thoughts, his feelings, his purposes. His thoughts are my thoughts. His ways are my ways. Hey, I have the mind of Christ. His thoughts are my thoughts. His ways are my ways. Wake up, believer. Clap your hands and give God praise. Come on. Wake up. Y'all see it? Say yes. This is so important if you are going to experience a positive, abundant, joyful, overflowing life with peace. If you want to enjoy the Christ life, a free life, a full life, I don't care what's going on in the world. You can enjoy a free life, a full life. You can enjoy your marriage. You can enjoy your relationships. You can enjoy your children. You've got to learn. You're going to have to learn to win the war in your mind. You may want to write it down. It is impossible to live a positive life with a negative mind. Is that too deep? It is impossible to live a positive life with a negative mind. His mind is not negative. I'm telling you, wars in the mind are nothing new. In fact, if I had time, I could give you story after story, after story, after story, after story, after story story from Scripture. Wars in the mind, they're at least as old as the Bible. And I could show you over and over and over again, I don't have time today. 
But I want to start by looking at the Apostle Paul, what he said in our theme verses. Look at this, 2 Corinthians 10. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds, strong ways of thinking that don't line up with the perfect will of God. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. Any thought that does not line up with what God knows to be true. We take that thought captive to the obedience of Christ on the cross. Y'all better hear me, church. Y'all better hear me, church. I'm telling you, if you listen carefully to what I just read to you, certain words just leap out of these verses. Did you see it? War, weapons, fight, stronghold. It's the picture of what? The front line of, of, of the battlefield. You can almost hear the guns firing. You can almost see the bombs exploding. You can almost smell the smoke all around you. There is a war that started the moment you reached the point where you could begin to think on your own. And once that war starts, it's never over until you take your last Thought. It is a war for mind control. Your mind, the Bible says, is like a castle. It is like a stronghold. It is like a fort. It is constantly under attack. Both uh, the world and the devil, the devil and this world have targeted your mind as the bullseye in this war. Why the mind? The answer is simple. Don't miss this. You may want to write it down. Whatever controls your mind is what controls you. Whatever controls your mind is what is controlling you. The mind is the control center of who you are. And let me put it another way. Our beliefs determine our behavior. What we believe determines how we live. And I know we focus in the church a whole lot on behavior, but the reality is behavior is only a byproduct of what you're believing. If you're gonna deal with your behavior, guess what? You gotta deal with what you're believing. What you're believing about God, what you're believing about yourself, what you're believing about your circumstances. And so our beliefs determine our behavior. And what we believe is so powerful. If we can change what we believe, we change our lives. Don't miss that. And the fact is, many of us are struggling right now to control our behaviors, to control our actions, because we don't have control over our emotions and our feelings, and we don't have control over our emotions and our feelings, because we don't have control over our thoughts, and we don't have control over our thoughts, because we are not controlling what we believe. Put simply, if we believe wrong, we will struggle with wrong thoughts, we will struggle with toxic emotions. We will struggle with destructive addictions. But let me tell you the good news. The good news is there's a way out of this vicious cycle. We can win the war in our minds. Proverbs 23 verse number seven says it this way. For as a man, as a woman thinks within himself, herself, so is he. For as a man thinks within himself, so he is. I thought about an old proverb that says it like this. You sow a thought, you reap an act. You sow an act, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you reap a character. You sow a character, watch, you reap a destiny. But I want you to notice the first link of the chain. It's a thought. It starts with a thought. The mind, so powerful. It's the key that unlocks everything. Unlocks your heart, unlocks your hands, unlocks your habits. We have got to always make sure that our minds are controlled by the right force. Can I tell you, church, I teach this week after week. You do not win from the outside in. As a believer, you win from the inside out. We win from the inside out. And it is time for you to win the war in your mind. 
Church, hear your pastor today. It is time for you to win. I'm tired of the enemy taking advantage of so many believers right now. I am watching believers literally lose their sanity, lose their minds, making crazy decisions that are affecting their destiny. Church, you better hear me. It is time for you to win the war in your mind. And I am going to spend this entire month in this series talking about how to win. You ready? Say yes. I want us today to consider three simple truths and then I want to minister, I believe prophetically, to a whole lot of you that are losing the battle in your mind. So three truths that we've got to grab hold of from our theme text. One, don't miss it. One, you must direct your mind. You must direct your mind. You are not a victim. There's a lot of things in life you can't direct, but you can direct your own mind. You can direct your own thoughts. Look at verse 3. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The world's fighting each other. We do not wage war like the world does. What Paul's saying is, even though we live in a physical world, we do not fight a physical war. It is a spiritual war. There's a war going on right now. And the difference between the wars the world fights and the wars we fight, the world's wars are visible. Watch this, believer. Our war is invisible. It isn't a military war. It is a mental war. It's a war that's in the mind, of the mind, for the mind. And the good news is this. You can direct your mind. If you're a believer, you have got to understand that your mind at one time, I'm talking about your unrenewed mind. Your mind at one time was originally enemy territory. Thank God you're a believer now. But look at this, Colossians 1. Once you were alienated from God, and look what it says and were enemies, watch, in your own mind. There was a time in this war that your mind was on one side and God's thoughts was another, but the instant you were born again, God did an amazing work in your life. He gave you a completely new life. He changed just about everything there was to change about you. But one thing we've got to understand, you've got a mind that's got to be renewed. Your mind has got to line up with the new mind that you've been given in Christ Jesus. And if you want to know, let me tell you, in my book Limitless, I talk about three important questions. And the first two questions have to do with the spirit, who you are in the spirit. See, the reason why some of you struggle with, with my teaching is watch, when I preach to you, I don't talk to who you were in Adam. I talk to who you are in Christ. I don't talk to the old you. I talk to the new you. Are y'all getting this? Smile. This is good news. Y'all looking at me mean. Come on. I don't bring a ministry of condemnation. I bring a ministry of affirmation. I don't talk about rules on rocks. I talk about a relationship, the indwelling Holy Spirit. I don't talk about you trying to behave on the outside. I talk about the new life of Christ that you were given and you live from that place on the inside and it changes everything on the outside. So I understand when I talk to you, I'm talking about your born again spirit, but the reality is watch the fight. Every day you are renewing your mind. Old ways of thinking, old ways of believing. I talk about all of this. As a matter of fact, I don't have time, but there's so many scriptures that I can give you. There's about 40 scriptures that I want to give you, and I'm going to give them to you. I did something special for you because this month I want you meditating on scripture. Some of you need to turn some things off. There is so much noise. There is so much distraction. I'm telling you, your mind can't even process everything that's going on around the world. Some of you need to slow down and you need to begin to meditate. Think about God's word. Begin to change your perspective. But that first question is, what did I lose at the cross? First question. First two questions have to do with your spirit. The last question has to do with the body, the soul. What did I lose at the cross? At the cross, I'm going to give you so much scripture right here. At the cross, your old self was crucified. Smile when I talk to you. 
Your old self was crucified. The person you used to be apart from God, the Bible calls it your old man, is dead. So there's no point in you wasting time trying to reform him. If your old man gave you a bitter, painful past, I got a word for you today. You can go dance on his grave because he's gone and he is not coming back. Come on. Old things passed away, all things brand new. Come on. Do you know what else is gone? The Bible says all your sin, past, present, future. Sin had a death grip on you, but the Bible says in Colossians 2 that Christ cut him loose. You may still wrestle with some old habits, but you do so now, Galatians says, from a place of freedom. You are no longer sin slave. Your natural inability to please God is gone, the Bible says. God's pleased with you. He is pleased with you on account of Jesus so you can say goodbye to guilt and condemnation. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Rejection is gone. And if you can wrap your mind around the awesome love revealed to you through the cross, then you will find, 1 John says, all fear of punishment is gone. Fear torments, but all fear of punishment is gone. Finally, the world as you knew it is no more. Your old source of identity and security has been replaced with something infinitely better. Any performance anxiety you may have about the future will go when you realize, church, that you are in him. And the Bible says he has already overcome the world. And if you are in him, guess what that makes you? an overcomer this world is not going to overcome you you are going to overcome this world and if i got any overcomers in here clap your hands and give god praise come on Woo. tell two people just look at him say he's talking about me come on tell him look at the one you didn't look at and say do you know who you're sitting next to come on next question what did i gain after the cross at the cross, and before you did a single thing, oh, receive this. The Bible says you received peace with God. Whew. Complete forgiveness. When you were placed in Jesus, you gained his acceptance, his righteousness, his holiness, his perfection. Watch, you don't act holy to become holy. You act holy because you know in him, I already am holy. Isn't that wonderful? But wait, it gets better. As a result of the cross, he gave you his life. It's called the Christ life. Christ is your life. You now stand on his faith. You are filled with his spirit. You think his thoughts because you have his mind. When you were born again, you were made into a brand new creature. As he is, so are you in this world. So obviously, you don't have a sinful nature. You're no longer a sinner saved by grace. You are now a saint in Christ Jesus who occasionally sins. You aren't one person on Sunday and another on Monday. Sure, you can still walk in the flesh, the Bible says, if you want to, and you'll always reap corruption, but you are not defined, believer, by what you do. You are defined by what Jesus has already done. And when you do sin, in. Thank God. The Bible says, believer, you have an advocate who speaks to the Father on your behalf. But here's the thing. Here's the gospel. You no longer want to sin. That's why it doesn't feel right anymore. Because of the cross, you have new desires. You have new aspirations. You used to be driven by the flesh, but now the Bible says you are led by the Spirit. You used to work to prove yourself. But now you are simply compelled by the love of God. And strangely for believers, you ought to be more rested. You ought to be more fruitful. And best of all, can I tell you today, you gained a new father. And now you enjoy full rights of sonship before the cross. You feared God from a distance. But come on now, you approach the throne of grace. The Bible says with confidence before the cross, you were a beggar living off scraps from the table. But because of the cross, I declare over 
over you today that you have every one of your needs met. As a matter of fact, pull your seat up to the table and go ahead and take whatever you want. Do you want healing? Take as much as you want. Do you want deliverance? Take as much as you want. You all slow, but you're worth waiting for. Do you want joy? Take as much as you want. Do you want peace? Take as much as you want. Do you want provision? Take as much as you want. If I got a church that believes it, clap your hands and give God praise. Come on. You're rich in Christ Jesus. You have authority. You have authority. I know there's a lot going on in the world, but believer, I came to remind you today, you have authority over sickness. You have authority over demons. You lay hands on the sick, the Bible says, and they recover. I wish the church believed this stuff. One more question. What about this? Last question. What did I retain after the cross? Okay, watch. As we've seen, you lost a lot, you gained a lot. But on the day that you got born again, there were two things that you retained. Unchanged. First, think of your physical body. The day you were born again, your physical body didn't change. You may have been healed, but your body is still subject to the effects of the fall. Although you're saved, your earth suit, I'm sorry, y'all, I don't mean to mess with you, but your earth suit is getting older one day at a time. That's why the Bible says in Romans 8, we are waiting eagerly for the redemption of our bodies. Second... Beyond deciding to trust Jesus with your life, watch. Your way of thinking, the unrenewed mind, old habits, twisted thoughts, twisted beliefs did not change. Let me tell you something. If you liked chocolate and you drove badly before you were saved, (laughs) after you were saved, watch, you still like chocolate and you still drove badly. Come on. Again, the instant you were born again, God did an amazing work in your life. He changed just about everything there is to change about you. But one thing God left here, your your old way of thinking, your old thoughts, only you can do that. The renewing of your mind. And given that there's one part of you that didn't change at the cross, what do you think is the key for you to live a victorious life, the Christ life in a time like this? Let me tell you, you need to learn how to direct your mind. Or let me say it another way. Change your thinking. You have the mind of Christ. You begin to line up your mind to the thoughts of Christ. You allow him to illuminate truth. Ephesians 4.23 says, you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Our thought patterns are shaped by our past. So watch this. Which past today are you going to identify with? Every day this week, think about this. Which past are you going to identify with? Are you going to identify in your mind with your old history in Adam? Or are you going to identify in your new history in Christ Jesus? Everything we need pertaining to life and godliness comes through what? Knowing the knowledge of him who called us. And if you want to see breakthrough in your life, this is not a trick question. How many of you want to see breakthrough in your life? Wave your hands at me right now. If you want to see breakthrough in your life, look to Jesus. Jesus, look to the cross and you begin to direct the way you think. Look at Romans 12 2. It says, hey, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Look what it says, by the renewing of your spirit. No, by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. And as a pastor, can I just tell you, church, I deal with a whole lot of people who are going through very difficult, very dangerous, uh, moral, marital situations, and, and, and just talking with them, it does not take me long to realize the reason they are even in the situation they are in. It is because they are losing the wars in their mind. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but their minds are conformed to this world, and 
and they aren't being transformed by the renewing of their mind. They've got the world's thinking pattern. They've got the world's belief systems. They are conformed to this world. They are not being transformed by the renewing of their minds. And that is why at every moment of your life, 24 seven church, you can never let your guard down. You can't relax in this war. There's no time out. Remember, whatever controls your mind at any given moment is what controls every part of your life. That is why every day you have got to slow down. You've got to have a plan in place to make sure that you are directing your thoughts. You've got to do this. You've got to make sure you're directing your thoughts thoughts ahead of time. You're saying, this is where I'm going to allow my mind to go. This is where I'm going to allow my mind not to go. This is where my mind can stay, where it can't stay. This is where my mind can live. No, I'm not going to let my thoughts live there. So changing your mind, that is the battle. It isn't always easy. You can suffer the pain of change or you can suffer remaining as you are. You decide. You are not a victim. You decide when it comes to the renewing of your mind. And if you're getting this, say yes. Okay, I put together, I literally just gave you, are you ready for this? Over 40 scriptures. Here's what I did for you. On the Calvary app homepage, I've given you 40 scriptures this month I want you to meditate on. When you are hit with lies every day, I want you to find a place, I want you to pull up those scriptures, take one or two of them, and start changing your mind. Start meditating on the Word of God. Start directing your thoughts. And so we're going to be looking at these scriptures all through this series. Stay with me all month long. I want you winning this war. I want to help you. Take this serious. Take this serious. Number two, write it down. You must protect your mind. Protect your mind. Look at verses four and five. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds, strong ways of thinking. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Stop right there. Now, at least we know the strategy of the enemy. He wants to put any barrier, any contradiction he can between your mind and the knowledge of God or what God knows to be true about you. Six chapters earlier, in the fourth chapter of this book, Paul made this statement. Look at 2 Corinthians 4.4. The God of this age has blinded, look at this, blinded the minds of unbelievers. Unbelievers, unbelievers. Say it out loud. Say, I am a believer. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. I know the church is full of unbelieving believers, but you're a believer. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel. Every time you talk to an unbeliever, always remember, you are talking to someone who is literally flying blind. They cannot see the light. What does it say? Even the believer isn't immune to mind control. In the very next chapter, in verse 3, what does Paul say? 2 Corinthians 11. He says, hey, believer, your minds may sometimes be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Church, may you hear me today. There is a collapse amongst many believers right now. Let me tell you, their minds are being led astray. And for most of my life, I'm going to be honest with you, I simply thought whatever fell into my head. That's how I lived. Whatever fell into my head, that's what I thought. And much of what was in my head, did you know, it was either a lie from the enemy or it was just plain old nonsense. And the devil was controlling my life because he was controlling my thoughts and the world was controlling my life because the world was controlling my thoughts. I was a believer. I was forgiven. I was free. I was a pastor. I was leading. I was loving. But I wasn't diligent in protecting my mind. My mind was easily led astray. Watch, it was easily led astray from what? From the gospel. Look at Mark 4, 24. And he said to them, be careful that you're hearing. Be careful what you're hearing. 
The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. Do you know what the scripture is telling us here? The more we spend time in what God, the word, Jesus, the word, what God believes true about us, the more power and ability we will have to walk in this life. It also says that the more we read and we listen to the word in light of the new covenant, the more revelation we will receive to understand it and in the flesh not the spirit in the flesh not the spirit in the flesh we are lazy and we want to receive from God without any effort on our part and the effort is what believing as a matter of fact that's the only thing we labor for the Bible says we labor to enter rest but that's not the way it works you only get out of the word what you are willing to put in not not, not, not only must we direct our mind but we got to protect our mind we got to be diligent in what we allow into our minds there is no condemnation, no condemnation, but I want to ask you a question. Really think about it. Before I close and minister prophetically to some of you right now that feel like you're about to quit because of the mind that's going, the, the war that's going on in your mind. But really think about this. What social media? What news outlets? What music? What movies are you setting your mind on day in, day out? What feeds, what blogs, what, what books just setting your mind, articles just setting? What are you setting your mind on? Church, you have got to make a decision to say, I will meditate on God's word every day because every moment I spend absorbing it, what does the Bible say? The more virtue, the more knowledge I receive from God. And I'm not beating anybody up, but you know what I've realized? I'm talking to the church. I'm not talking to everybody out there. I don't, I, I don't even know what's going on. I'm talking to the church. This is what breaks my heart. Most people know more about Cardi B than their righteous identity. I'm talking to church people. More people know about TikTok Instagram and Facebook then they do righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit and you wonder why your world's messed up most of us is this too hard today most of us we know more about the world's bad news than we do about the good news where are you setting your mind I'm gonna close with this one right here write it down fast you must connect your mind are y'all getting it today Connect your mind to what? Connect your mind to what? Connect your mind to what? Not what, who? Say his name. Jesus. Connect your mind to who? Jesus. Look at Philippians 4. Fix or connect your thoughts on what is true. Who's true? Honorable, who's honorable? Right, who's right? Pure, who's pure? Lovely, who's lovely? Admirable, who's admirable? Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. You fix your thoughts on the gospel. Why, 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 why? Because your assurance depends on it. I heard from a family this week who got a horrible report. And I decided I'm gonna reach out to them this week. Family in this church, they were in the first service today. And so I reached out to them and I got a text back from them and I said, I wish the church would understand the level of revelation that this couple has. Because if you knew what they were facing. And I wanna to read to you a portion of the text that they sent to me. They get what I'm saying. Listen to what they said. Pastor, thank you. God is our refuge. Pastor, thank you for always preaching the good news of a God who loves us and is for us. Listen to what they said. The gospel is the only message that gives us peace of mind and confidence in a world that is up 
and down and up and down and up and down. Let me tell you why some of you are so unstable in your life, because you're living your life by everything going on in the world. And the reality is it's time to take your mind and say, I'm going to redirect it to what's true about me in Christ Jesus. And I hope you understand why this war that I'm talking about is one that you can't afford to lose. The only way to stay in control of you right now is to stay control in control of your mind. And the good news is you don't fight empty handed. We don't, we don't fight alone in this battle. Look at, look at verse four or five, the weapons we fight with. They're not the weapons of this world. And I'm gonna teach you on this next week. They have divine power to demolish strong ways of thinking that oppose the will of God. We demolish arguments, every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. We take every one of those lies captive to the obedience, not your obedience, to the obedience of Christ on the cross. Okay. I wanna to minister to you now by the Holy Spirit. There's a story I'm gonna tell you. And I believe I have a prophetic word for you today. I really do. I believe it's the timing of the Holy Spirit. Take your hand, set it on your belly. Lift up your head, get it out of everything going on in this world. Do me a favor, just take one or two deep breaths. Would you do that? I'm talking to those of you, the war has been raging. The fight has been so difficult. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I read this story and I thought of some of you. I want to close with a true story on just how powerful your mind really is and why you've got to win the war in your mind. It happened in the 80s, the late 80s, true story. There was a guy by the name of Nick who was a big, he's a strong guy and he worked in the railroad yard for many, many years and he was one of the company's best employees, but he was negative, negative. Mind was always on negative things, always pessimistic about everything, always feared that the worst that could happen would happen. And one hot summer day, the crews were told that they could go home early. And all the workers left, but somehow Nick accidentally locked himself in a refrigerated box car that had been brought into the yard for maintenance. The box car was empty and not connected to any other trains. And when Nick realized that he was locked inside this, this refrigerator or refrigerated box car, he began to panic. And, and he began beating on the doors. I mean, almost broke his his hands and he's screaming and he's screaming and nobody was even there to hear him. And, and aware that he was in this refrigerated box car, he figured out that the temperature in the unit was probably below freezing, maybe as low as five to 10 degrees. And he feared the worst. And he thought to himself, if I don't get out of here, I'm literally gonna freeze to death. There's, there, there's no way that I can stay here all night. I'm gonna die, I'm, I'm gonna die. And the more he thought about it, the colder he got. And with no way of escape, he sat down to wait to die. And to pass the time, he decided, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write my, my last will and testament. And he, he had a knife and he, he etched on the floor of the boxcar just shivering uncontrollably. And, and, and he etched these words. He said, getting so cold, my body is so numb. I am not going to make it. And then he says, these are my last words. And the next morning, the crews came and they opened this box car and there's Nick crumpled over. He had died in the corner of that box car. And when the autopsy was completed, here's what's crazy. It revealed that Nick had frozen to death. Now watch, here's the fascinating part of the story. You ready? The investigators discovered 
that the refrigeration unit for that box car in which Nick was trapped, it wasn't even plugged in. Watch, as a matter of fact, it was broken and wasn't even functioning. The temperature in the box car that night, I'm talking about the one that he froze to death in, was 62 degrees. He froze to death in slightly less than room temperature because he was convinced in his mind he was in a freezing box car. And you know what one doctor said? When I read the story, I thought this was crazy and I thought about some of you. The doctor said the cause of his death, watch, was that he lost the war in his mind. Question. Now I'm talking to you. What box car are you dying in right now? What box car are you dying in right now because of negative thoughts? Your box car may be a bad relationship. Your box car may be a financial situation. Your box car may be, I don't know, a struggle on the job, world events, an out of control addiction a physical illness, whatever it is, can I speak to you today prophetically and tell you this, that it is a temporary situation. I just want to remind somebody today that it's not even plugged in. In fact, there is no power. Did you catch that? It's got no power, and yet you are frozen in fear. Many of you are suffocating. You are struggling to even catch your breath, all because you have convinced yourself in your mind that a virtual reality is a horrifying actual reality and some of you have already I hear the Spirit of God right now I hear the Spirit of God some of you right now it's like you you've sat down in a corner you've sat down in a corner and it's like you're writing your last will and testament because you've given up you said I'm done I'm done I, I don't know I feel this is prophetic right now I sense the Spirit of God right now I want you to stand to your feet if you can if you can stand to your feet right now and lift up your hands some of you it's, it's a prophetic picture some of you got to get up you got to get up you got to get up lift up your hands lift up your hands hold them up high hold them up high I got to get you up some of you have sat down in the corner you said I'm writing out my last will and testament man I'm giving up I'm giving up but I hear the Spirit of God today may you hear the Spirit of God I speak over you right now those of you in the middle of the fight I speak may you hear the Spirit of God right now in the name of Jesus I speak over you it's not over I speak over you it's not finished it's not ending I prophesy that it's only the beginning because when God's in it and by the way he's right there I declare over you all things are new all things are new all things are new sing it it's not over say it Lift up those hands right now. Lift them up high. Receive right now. Prophesy over them. Come on. Lower floor, upper tier. Lift up your hands. Take a deep breath. It's not over. Yeah, yeah. It's not finished. Receive it's it now. Not it's only the beginning with God. Is it? All things are new. All things are new. Ooh. It's not over. Hey, hey. It's not finished. It's not ending. Say it. It's only the beginning when God is in it. Speak over their home. All things are new. Speak over. 
over their marriages. Speak over their money. Speak over their business. I want you to say it now. It's not over. Say it. Just the voices, say it. It's not over. It's not over. It's not finished. I can't hear you, church. It's not ending. You don't even realize you're prophesying right now. It's only the beginning when God is in it. All things are new. Ooh. Up your hands, hear the Spirit of the Lord, Proverbs 14 30. A calm, I'm ministering to you now. A calm and undisturbed mind is life. Whatever that temporary situation is that has boxed you in, and you've allowed the fact to settle in your mind. You become tormented and you feel death and the pro progressive effects of death. Fear, frustration, depression, despair, thoughts of death, anxiety. But when you learn to direct your mind and protect your mind, and connect your mind. It's the truth of God's word that brings life. Calms your mind. Calms your emotions that are out of control. And you sense the Holy Spirit. Watch, the Bible says, bearing witness. Don't you miss this. The Holy Spirit bears witness to truth, not facts, truth. Not facts, truth. Why? Truth remains. Don't miss this. Facts change. Who am I talking to right now? Who am I talking to right now? Your boxcar may be sickness. Sickness may be one of those facts. And the doctors say that you're sick. And the x-ray film shows that you're sick. Move that. Shake. You. Stand right there. And the doctors say you're sick. And the x-ray film says you're sick. And that's a fact. Boy, I've heard you talk about this even this morning. And some people don't even realize for you to even get here today, you got to ice that thing over and over again, even to get here. But God's word says, truth by Jesus' stripes. Not you will be healed. But you were healed. That is the truth of your situation. What's the difference between facts and truth? Facts change. Truth remains. Lift up your hands. I know there's a call on your life. And in the name of Jesus, I come against discouragement right now. In the name of Jesus, it said you're never going to minister again. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hand. Where's your wife? 
Come on up here, stand with me. In the name of Jesus, I declare over the both of you right now, not the facts, but the truth that by his stripes you are healed. You are healed in the name of Jesus. You will walk in your healing and you will fulfill everything that God said you will fulfill. Lift up your eyes. You're not going to die in that boxcar. There's too much on your life. And in the name of Jesus, I speak it over you now. Every one of you, lift up your hands. Don't ask for anything. Just receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Just receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Just receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we declare the truth. It's the truth you know that sets you free. Take a deep breath. You're not trapped. You're not stuck. You're not on hold. You are free. You are full. You are equipped. You are empowered. Renew your mind with these realities. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Make up your mind. I saw, I saw some of you. I saw some of you in my, in my eye like you were in the corner. Just crumbled up, man. All day just feeding on everything, feeding on everything, listening to voices. Some of you, even your own parents, people in your life, your friends, so-called friends. Some of you I'm talking to online, you've disconnected from God's house. You've disconnected from the gospel. You've drifted and you wonder why. You wonder why you're in that place right now. I need the church to remind me of the, fa of the facts. No, of the truth. I know the facts. I'm so tired of church people saying, Pastor Ben, when are you going to talk about everything going on in the world? Don't you know it? Don't you know there's so much going on? Yeah, I know. But facts don't do anything for you. I know, you know. There's only one thing you can stand on. It's why the church is so terrified right now because they're trying to build their life on sand. an anointing if you've been fighting in your mind man I'm, I'm right there with you if you've been fighting in your mind I'm not trying to mess with anybody but if I'm talking to you hold your hand up high right now all over this place if I'm talking to you if it's been a fight lower floor upper tier don't give up don't give up when the war seems endless and you think you're never gonna make it And when lies, 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 this week lies, lies about your family, lies about your future, lies about your life, lies. When lies hit your mind this week, I want you to practice what I've taught you. And I want you to say it out loud this week when a lie hits your mind. That, that thing, whatever it is that makes you anxious and unsettled, some of you, that makes you fearful and afraid, that makes you tormented, you can't sleep. When those lies begin to hit your mind, I want you to lift up your hands and say it out loud. Some of you, this week, you're going to have to find a place to get there and just remind yourself and say it out loud. As a matter of fact, practice right now. When that lie hits your mind, say it out loud. Say, no! Y'all, come on, say no. no. Negative thoughts. Negative thoughts are not your thoughts. When the voice of death tries to corrupt your mind this week with negative thoughts, you say it out loud. Say no. no. I can't hear you. Say no. no. You know why I want you to open your mouth? Because I feel like for some of you, the enemy has shut up your mouth. And the only thing coming out of your mouth is fear. Listen to people talk. What are we going to do? What, oh God, what are we going to do if, if I, this is believers. What are we going to do if gas goes to $8 a gallon? 
What if? Does that change God's faithfulness? Do you think God is wringing his hands in heaven saying, oh myself, I was totally unaware. God knows how to take care of his kids. The church better get a hold of this. The church better get a hold of this. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but church, if you are the church, you have nothing to fear. Lift up your hands, you're gonna say it out loud. Say, no! That thought is not my thought. I can't hear you. Say, no! That thought is not my thought. I refuse to embrace it. I have the mind of Christ. Practice it again. Say, no! That thought is not my thought. I refuse to embrace it. I have the mind of Christ. Now lift up your hands, every one of you. Father, I thank you that you have given us the mind of Christ as a free gift. You have given us a righteous mind. We hold the thoughts. We hold the feelings. We hold the purposes of your heart toward us, toward others, toward the circumstances that some of us find ourselves in right now today. We embrace the truth, not the facts, the truth. We embrace the truth of our identity and we thank you for changing the way we think. This month, I declare, is a month of changed minds. We are gonna work on this as a church. It's a month of changing the way we think about everything, not by might, not by power, not by our effort, not by our strength, but by the Spirit of God. And if I have a church that believes it, clap your hands and give God praise right now. Come on. Come on, Calvary. Let's thank God for that reminder. We're winning the war in our mind. We're winning the war in our mind. I said we're winning the war in our mind. We're going to direct some things. We're going to protect some things. We're going to connect to the right source. We're going to rehearse what he agrees about us and what he's already declared over us. Clap your hands if you're receiving that today. Don't miss any part of this. Next three weeks are going to be very key as we progress into this summer. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to hear your word. And before we leave today, we pray that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, will lift up, encourage every heart that is receiving the power of living a life that wins the war in their minds. I speak strength to areas that we're weak. I speak joy to areas where we've been down. I speak peace to every troubled part of us in Jesus' name. Clap your hands if you receive that today. Before you go, three things. Number one, Gospel Circle started last week all over the Metroplex. You didn't get a chance to get to one. You still got time. Sign up this week. Next week, Grace Walk right here, 845 in the Grace Walk room. It is a clear picture of the onboarding process here at Calvary. You want to be a part of that if you've never been. And thirdly, you got to understand the power of us coming together on a regular basis and having baptisms. It's coming up on Father's Day, June 19th. I want you to get your family together and we're gonna get baptized on Father's Day. If you haven't been baptized, that is a powerful public demonstration that we encourage for you and your family. Also, don't forget in the Welcome Center. Pastor Melody is out there and she is just being a liaison for one of our partners, Family First. They're going to have an interest meeting right here at Calvary on June 20th for any family that wants to get information on how to foster a child. If you want to know about that, you've been praying about it, or if you want to give the information to someone else, she's going to be at the Welcome Center waiting on you to answer any questions. God bless you, Calvary. We love you. You're winning the war in your mind. Let's rejoice together. See you at a gospel circle, or we'll see you next week.